Let somebody shout the Lord, hallelujah. Would you please lift up your right hand to the Lord right now. Lift up your voice. Father, right now, visit me again. Pray that prayer for yourself one moment and let God hear your voice right now. Oh God, visit me again by your word. By your word. Visit me again by your word. Someone is praying. And this prayer, you are praying it for yourself. Visit me again by your word at this moment. Oh, Lord God, visit me again. My heart is ready. Change my story and move me forward. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word that has gone forth already. And right now, our heart is ready. Visit us again by your word. Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher. Take over. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shout the louder, amen. amen. Please, you may be seated and put your hands together for Jesus. I'm sure you can make it bigger and louder. It's for Jesus. Praise God. Understanding the faith that works. And in this segment, we shall be taking a look at how to develop your faith. How to develop your faith. I want to read two scriptures as our text as we take a look at this subject right now. The first scripture is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. The scripture says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth. How? How? Can you say louder, please? How? And the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounded. Say loud, Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 15 is the second scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 15. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labor, but having hope. When your faith is what? that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. God's servant, the apostle of this commission took us very powerfully on the subject of faith. One of the most profound statements that he made that night that has stayed and stuck with me is what I'm beginning with right now. And he said, faith is a spiritual profession. How many of you remember that statement? Taking root from Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Faith is a spiritual profession. And we all know that to remain relevant in your profession, you have to ensure that you constantly develop yourself in it. If you must retain and be relevant in your profession, no matter what kind of profession it may be, you must ensure that you constantly regularly develop yourself in that profession. It is the same thing with the subject of faith. Praise the Lord. And the faith that you don't develop will definitely diminish until it is vanquished. That will not be your portion. When I was in secondary school, Many years ago, 
one of the subjects that we were taught was typewriting. And another one called shorthand. How many of you ever knew about that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And those were two of the subjects I used to like very much. When it was time to go to this typing pool, it was always full of excitement for me. But what were the available equipment then in the typing pool? Typewriter. How many of you have ever seen a typewriter in your life? Not too many people. There were no internet then. There were no computers then. And what we had that was the highest then, Olympia typewriter. Amen? When you were typing in the typing pool then, you were hearing your neighbor. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. pa. The noise. Amen? Praise God. The noise was so disturbing, but as I then, that was the highest that was available. But if you go to the market today, will you be able to get a trapeter to buy? No. There are several high-tech devices that have come in to play and people keep improving and improving and improving over them over and again. So when computers came on the scene, I had to sit down and use my basic knowledge of typewriter in the typing pool of many years ago to develop myself on how to be able to use the computer. Constantly developing yourself. Your faith requires constant development. Your faith shall never be stagnated. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen? Amen. And please, it's important for us to understand that developing your faith is a personal responsibility. It's a non-transferable responsibility. No one else can develop your faith for you. You have to do it. No one else can develop the faith of another for him or for her. Developing your faith is a personal, non-transferable responsibility. Grace to be able to constantly develop your faith, receive it in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, God's word makes it very clear. God has given to every man a measure of faith. May your faith continue to be developed in Jesus' name. We all must remember that faith is the master key to your destiny. Matthew 9, 29 makes that very clear. It is the master key to your destiny. And we see it all through scriptures and in our contemporary life, actually right now, that every man and woman that keeps breaking limits are men and women of faith who constantly develop their faith. You see it all over the scriptures. If you look at Hebrews chapter 11, for example, in verse 11, talking about Sarah, the Bible says, through faith, through faith, Sarah broke limits. She was past age, and yet she received strength to conceive. She broke limit of her life. Barrenness turned to fruitfulness. Develop faith. Develop faith. As many as are here on Shiloh ground, whether right here in Canaan land, or all across the nations of the earth, and you are believing God for fruitfulness, for the fruit of the womb, for children from God. I've got good news for someone this morning. You are returning home with your babies. Yeah. Can I hear louder? Amen. Yeah. 
The God who did it for Sarah, he has already settled your case. All across the nations of the earth, I see miracle babies hanging over the roof. And you can receive your portion. We see Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18. He called fire on the altar of Baal. Every limitation around your life and destiny. The God of Elijah is at work. And that God is changing someone's story. We just heard about Moses a while ago. And next chapter 14, beginning from verse 21. We see how God used Moses to lead Israel through the Red Sea. No matter the kind of Red Sea that might be threatening your life, your destiny, before you came to Shiloh 2019, I've got good news for you. That Red Sea is parting way for you. As you leave the Shiloh ground, you are walking on dry ground. And every pharaoh that might have been pursuing you before you came to Shiloh, they shall be drowned in the Red Sea. How about the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 to 22? She went and pressed through the press, made a way, touched the hem of Jesus Christ, and she was made whole. In case you came to Shiloh with any sickness, with any disease, no matter whatever name it might have been called, I've got good news for you today. No matter where you may be on the surface of the earth, Listening to this message right now, you are returning whole, completely made whole. Every terminal disease under the sound of my voice right now, I decree that you will be terminated. Last night, we had a lot of instant testimonies. Over 20 years healed of this, healed of that, too much disappearing. It doesn't matter how you came to Shiloh. The good news is you are returning liberated. Yeah. Can I hear louder? Amen. Yeah. Why must I develop my faith? Someone might ask, why? Why must I develop my faith? Please understand, people of God, that every commandment of Scripture is for our profiting. Why do I have to develop my faith? Very importantly, one primary reason is because it is impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It is impossible to please God without faith. God's servant has told us over and again that God said to him, I am pleased with you. That's something money cannot buy. And without faith, God cannot be pleased with you. Without faith, you cannot please God. I have said to people over and again every time I have the opportunity, I said to myself, what exactly am I driving at in this life? For me to be able to say at the end of my journey, in good old age, when I meet with my master to hear from him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But before that will happen, God will tell you over and again how he is pleased with you. From this day forward, grace to be able to continue to develop your faith until you are able to hear from God, I am pleased with you, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Say like that, amen, if you receive it. Also remember, very importantly, there are levels of faith. Faith is in degrees. Mark 4.40. We heard the word of God saying to us clearly there, there is a level of no faith. Luke 12.28, there is a level of little faith. There is a level of weak faith. Romans 4.19. There is a level of strong faith. Faith, Romans 4 20. There is a level of great faith, Matthew 15 28. There is a level of exceeding faith. We just read that scripture, 2 Thessalonians 1 3. 
There is a level of overcoming faith. First John 5, 4. And finally, there is a level of the spirit of faith. Second Corinthians 4, 13. The spirit of faith shall return with each and every one of us from this mountain in Jesus' name. How do you develop your faith? But the good news is, no matter the level of faith that you may be right now, you can grow in it. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, your faith shall no longer be stagnated. How do you develop your faith, therefore? If we have to grow it, if we have to develop it. How do I develop my faith? Number one major way of developing your faith is to engage in active study of the Word of God. Engage in active study of the Word of God, which is the Bible. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of who? By hearing the Word of God. So the Word of God is the food that faith feeds on. And we all know it's a known fact, you are what you eat. You eat healthy, you enhance your health. You eat junk food, you damage your health. God's Word is the food that faith feeds on. And when you keep feeding your faith, you starve your doubt. It's high time, therefore, for us to register in a lifelong school of faith. I've said it over and again that in our own family, the subject of faith is a compulsory course. It is not an elective. It is a compulsory course. It is not what? And in the same vein, in the winner's family, the subject of faith is a compulsory course. Those of you who are right here in Canaan land, this place is called what? Faith. What? That is a place where faith tabernacles. And the church global is called Living Faith Church. Therefore, as a member of this church family, faith is a compulsory cause. And indeed, whatever local assembly you belong to, as a child of God, faith is a compulsory cause. If you are in school, and you fail the compulsory course, are you likely going to graduate? From this day forward, therefore, your faith shall no longer fail. Yeah. Active study of God's word. God's servant took us last night a great deal on that subject, and so I won't dwell much on that anymore. But we must remember Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So, let your spirit man be alive. Let it be active. Let it be sensitive because God will be connecting you to the realm of no limit. I see every limit broken off your life and destiny in Jesus' name. Can I hear louder? Amen. And it's important for us to understand that if we must be a life student of the word of God, then we must make ourselves teachable. We heard that in the last message as well. One thing I have come to discover among several others, in the life of God's servant, the apostle over this commission, is his dedication to the study of the word of God. And you see that every time he comes out here, always burning the midnight candle, reading the Bible, reading 
the word of God. Studying. He's always reading and writing. You remember, he has told us over and again how that New York Times asked him one time, what do you do with your time? And he said, I read and I do what? I think. I read and I think. I read and I think. Someone asked him years ago, and he has shared that with us also many times. Do you cram scriptures? What was his answer? I eat them. I eat them. I don't cram them. I eat them because the word of God is spiritual food. Grace to also tap into that unction. Receive it in Jesus' name. For us to begin to labor in the word of God. And I've come to discover that the more you study the Bible, the more you discover that I don't even know it the way I ought to. Do I have a witness in the house? Does it happen to you like that? You read one scripture and you're like, oh, I thought I read this before. The more you study the word of God, the more you discover that you don't even know it yet the way you ought to. Having traveled several places with God's servant, no matter where you put him, no matter how luxurious the hotel or whatever, two things that must not be missing. Do you know what they are? Do you know what they are? Do you know what they are? You want me to tell you? Reading table and a reading chair. If there is no reading table, don't bother yourself. If there is no reading chair, don't bother yourself. No matter how luxurious the hotel, he will either check out or you produce those two items. Praise the Lord. I've been to places with him, and then once we enter the room, the first thing is, where's the reading table? No, 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 no. You have to get this. There's either a reading table and a chair, as be sure he's on his way out of that place. Why? There is a spiritual culture of reading. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Say, me, I receive it. Louder yet, I receive it. Number two, to develop your faith, you must commit to meditation. Meditation, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate therein day and what? When you remove day and night, what remains? You shall meditate upon the word day and night. Every moment. Meditation on the word of God is crucial if we must develop our faith. What is meditation? Thinking through scriptures. Thinking through scriptures. You've heard it, you've read it, but now you are thinking it. And remember Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's time for us to ensure that our thoughts are purified and filled with the word of God. When you keep thinking on the word of God and meditating on it, it will definitely continue to grow. Grace to begin much more than ever before to meditate on God's word, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, may I receive it? I receive it. Number three, to develop your faith. Engage in the study of the word of faith, materials, and resources. Resources and materials on faith. This is very important. Invest in them, Genesis chapter 14 and verse 14. The word of God makes it very clear. When Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. He didn't arm everyone. He armed his trained servants. Someone has said, and I believe it's very important, if I have seen any further, it is by standing on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead of me. Look at materials on faith from men 
and women who have proofs of it in their lives and then begin to consume them over and again. God's servant has shared with us over and again that he has read all that Kenneth E. Hagin wrote. Do you remember you have heard that so many times? Why? Standing on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead. And of course, by instinct, wherever I go and I see books by Kenneth E. Hagin or his wife, you know, it's just natural to just buy it. It's just natural. Why? You are investing in materials of those who have proofs in their lives. Praise God. He shared with us last night, talking about great man of God, Wigusworn. How that God, through him, taught him how to be able to despise the devil. That Wigusworn came out one day and then he saw an ugly figure rocking on the chair. And he hissed. I didn't even know he's with the devil. And he went back and slept. And he said, according to that testimony, since that day, authority, dominion, power over the powers of darkness. Why? Through study of materials of men who have proofs in their lives. Praise God. It is time for us, saints of God, globally, to begin to invest much more than ever before in spiritual materials. Ever since I met God's servant, investment in books, materials, resources of spiritual value has been one uppermost thing. If you get to our home today, there is a whole big room called the library filled with books books and books and books everywhere this is not the only library in the household there are some other libraries in different pocket places including of course the bedroom so you sleep with books you wake up with books you sleep with Bibles, you wake up with Bibles. Someone's story is changing today. How will his faith not be strong? Because it's God's word everywhere, every day, every time. Have you ever seen his briefcase? Have you ever seen his briefcase? Those who have the opportunity to carry his briefcase at any point in time, you will thank God for that. They are the light ones, not to talk the least. When you carry any of his briefcase, you know you are carrying luggage. <laughs> Do not say I told you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Whenever he returns home with his briefcase, I'm always grateful to God when there's someone else around to carry that briefcase inside the bedroom. And when you open the briefcase, what's in there? Bibles, books, notes, papers, pen. One thing he's used to asking me for over and again in the house is, do you have some sheets of paper there? I'm thinking to myself, Lord have mercy every time. Praise God. Why will his faith not be strong? Developing your faith is a responsibility. No one else can do that for you. Those who work with him in the office, they are living witnesses. And when he leaves them in the office, he comes back to the house and the same thing continues. And then he will keep reading and searching and writing and reading, and searching, and writing. That is how to grow your faith. May that same spirit rest upon each one right now. I said, may that same spirit rest upon each one right now. We are here right now on Shiloh Grand, 
one of the major investments you can make in your life and in the life of other loved ones. Get the teaching materials of Shiloh. Take them back home with you. And thank God, God has made it easy. You can go on the internet and get many of those resources quick, quick. Get them across to people. Let them have the opportunity to develop their faith. Listen to them over and over and over and again. Get any of the resource materials, the books that are relevant to your own peculiar situations and then read them again and again. This is a festive season. People always exchange gifts. Don't just buy material gifts, things that people will use and that will be the end of it. Give them the gift of life. Buy Bibles and give to people. Buy relevant books and give to people as gifts. Don't say, oh yes, this is Christmas season. Take this money. Thank God for that. Get them those materials. By so doing, you are giving them the gift of life. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? And one more thing to parents here. Very, very important. We take care of our children. Thank God for that. And this is important. But make investment at their own level on materials spiritual materials that will help them to develop their faith. If you do that today, tomorrow they will give you rest. Don't just buy clothes and buy shoes while those ones are relevant. Buy them books. Get them Bibles. Don't say, well, I bought my child who is 10 years old a Bible five years ago. Is there only one dress you bought for that child since five years ago? Buy them over and over and over and over and again. Praise God. Thank God for electronic Bibles all over the place. But it's very important for us to ensure also that the printed Bibles are made available. Both of them have their relevant places. You will make it in Jesus' name. Can I hear louder? Amen. I said you will make it. Say me, I shall make it. Say it again, I shall make it. Say loud amen to that. And of course, next, covet the spirit of faith. Second Corinthians 4.13. Covet the spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. The spirit of faith. There is a spirit called the spirit of faith. Covert it. It is only what you covert that God will release unto you. Covert the spirit of faith. When you covert it, you will contact it. Until you covert it, you cannot contact it. Upon this mountain, someone under the sound of my voice will contact the spirit of faith. If you are that person, let your amen show it. Yeah. And then, of course, number five, be truly committed to word practice. Don't just be a hearer of the word. Put the word of God to work. James chapter 2 and verse 18. James 2, 18. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Practice what we hear. There are many things we hear, we write, but it ends there. But upon this mountain, grace to be a doer of the word, receive it in Jesus' name. James 1, 22, all the way down to 25 makes it here. It says, a man that hears God's word without practicing it is a self-deceiver. We have heard so much upon this mountain. Grace to put it to work, receive it in Jesus' name. You've heard about studying the word. You've heard about prayer. You've heard about meekness. You've heard about faith. All kinds of subjects. Grace to begin to practice it. Receive it in Jesus' name. I can never forget when the enemy radically attacked my health and things began to go the unexpected way. One of the major things that God's servant kept on telling me 
He said, go and listen to the messages you have preached to people before. Go and listen to the messages you have preached to people before. And I remember, I can never forget, I went back to God and I said, Lord, everything I have said, by your word, I have said in the integrity of my heart. But now that this situation is like this, I know your word cannot fail. And you are too faithful to fail. And I tell you, that was one major counsel that helped me in those days of challenges. Your enemies will smell every evil that the devil ever intended against you in any area of life, it will go back on their head. Not only go back on their head, but it will go back on their head sevenfold. At that time, I remembered that many years ago, 1992, I changed my name. Initially, my name was not Faith. Many of you don't know that. You want to know what my name used to be? Come next year, Shiloh. <laughs> but God, amen, but God in his mercy already prepared me because he knew the end from the beginning. Why did I change my name? Word practice. Because I discovered the name I used to bear, it wasn't a bad name, but it had no serious meaning to my destiny. So I decided to change it and do that legally. Now that name, Faith, is working for me like fire. <laughs> word practice. Grace to be a hearer and a doer of the word of God. Receive it in Jesus' name. And then, of course, be committed to praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude and verse 20. Unto you, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How many of you are baptized in the Holy Ghost? Shout the Lord, hallelujah. With the evidence of speaking in tongues, in case you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost yet, don't leave Shiloh ground without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Walk up to any of the officials and let them know, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's one major way. Engage the Holy Ghost. Engage the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And many of us that are baptized in the Holy Ghost, we don't even engage him. Make it a habit every blessed day to pray in the Holy Ghost. And you will see your faith growing like never before. And finally, as we round up, this is very important. Commit to a life of praise and thanksgiving. Commit to a life of praise and thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6. We thanksgiving. Whatever your situation or circumstance might be, spend time to thank God. And God will turn your situation around. I always tell my people are the mothers and fathers of nation class, spend few minutes every night on Shiloh Grand. Dance, rejoice, sing, praise God, thank Him for your fruitfulness. And the testimonies are always abounding. One of us stood here and shared a testimony a while ago in Faith Tabernacle. Matured in age, believing God for a husband, but it wasn't coming. After one of the services, according to her, she came out here and thanked God 7,000 times. How many times? The husband surface sharp, sharp. I've got good news for everyone under the sound of my voice that is matured for marriage. Upon this mountain, there shall be divine connections. There shall be divine connections. Rise up right now on your feet, everyone. And lift up your voice to God. Lift up your right hand to the Lord right now. And say after me, oh God, 
I receive grace more than ever before to develop my faith. So help me. Sound a loud amen. As you have declared it, so shall it be for you. Put your wonderful hands together for the Lord. 